community. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Picking up where we left off on the last episode, that super exciting, riveting episode, episode I might add, uh, where we had discovered that these little doofers here um, are what drive our IGBT chance. So, what I'm going to do this evening is make a little adapter board uh, so that we can take over control of uh, these. Then we're going to stuff this logic board back into the inverter so that we can determine which pin controls uh, which um, channel, basically. That's the idea. So let's get to it. So that's going to require some pretty serious surgery. I like that. you guys in closer for some of this. Try to be a little bit less uh there we go. Alright. There you go, now you got the whole mesh. Okay. Um so this is gonna require me to remove uh, these little peckers here which are quite small. Um and say they're 0204s or something like that. Uh, oh my god, there's people watching this crap. Wow, viewer city. Evening everyone. Hope you're uh hope you brought the popcorn. So anyhow, um what we're gonna do is Right, let's see if I can get you guys in a little bit nearer here. I don't know what the focal length of this thing is going to be, but we'll give it a shot. Stand by for some camera movements. Highly professional, of course. Alright, so. Hello, everyone. Um, I know the sound is probably crappy. I will turn off the gas heater as soon as it's warmed up in here hopefully then that'll make the sound somewhat better um so all right let's get soldering iron on so what we've got to do is remove these little resistors here because let me see if i'm doing this right i'm going to try and remember what i was doing yesterday so bear with me for a second here uh, always take notes but yeah okay i see it there yeah so all right, the signals come in. Yeah, the signals come in on these little blobs here. Uh, evening, everyone. The microwave. I uh, hope I'm not microwaving myself. Because what we want to do is... We want to stuff this, as I was saying, we, we're going to put this board back into the inverter so that we can uh, use it to determine which pin does what exactly. But in order to do that, we need to first sever the link from the... Yeah, so we're going to remove all of those resistors. And then we can put our own um, little bit of strip board here. I'm going to wire to that, just going to use this as a bridge so I can take ordinary wires back off it. In fact, I can probably make that smaller. We embarrass myself now by not being able to snap this. Oh, the microwave for the popcorn. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, but they're, all, they're, they're all green wires, Sean. That's half the problem. There's no blues and reds in here. It's not like the boobies. Alright, so soldering iron's warming up. I'm gonna get some uh, I'm gonna get some flux on this thing. I might even use the hot air gun just to take these off. Uh, let me measure one of them first, because I wanna write that down. Uh, yeah, so the from from what I can from what I've been uh, told or what I can see, the MG2 IGBTs can handle 600 amps. 
I think the MG1. There, I've got the page here. Go back to me. Uh, I can do 300. And you can certainly drive a DC motor. I did actually drive a DC motor with the uh, with the Gen 2 transaxle or the Gen 2 inverter. Uh, there's a video there from a couple of months back. Okay, so these are 1K. Okay, so we got 1K resistors going into these uh, little transistor doofers here. Alright, and we got, I think these are 10k pull downs. Yeah, we've turned this up a bit. Multimeter isn't quite up to the task. I'm trying to use a, you know, a simple cheap meter because I don't really want you guys to think that you need a load of fancy gear for doing this. You really don't. Yeah, 10k. Alright, I'm going to go turn off the gas heater. That'll hopefully make the sound a little bit better. If I get cold, it's going to have to go back on. So, all right, uh, right. Let's get these guys out of here. Um, by the way, uh, one thing I will ask people: this connector here um, that goes from the logic board to the IGBT driver board. Um, it's a JST part. I'll give you the part number in a minute, but if anyone knows where to get them, it would be much appreciated. Tried the usual suspects. The only one I could find within reason uh, was DigiKey. They do list it, but um, they do list it, but uh, they don't have any in stock and I think you ought to order a thousand or some crap like that so okay time for me to do my Lewis Rossman impression on this and see if we can get those little uh, those little resistors out of there I'd like get a pair of tweezers here all right let's grab some heat it's gonna get smoky folks Let me see if I can level this board out a little bit. Um, need something here. Just use this stick under it. Try not to uh, overheat the camera. Ow! I managed to overheat myself though, so that's good. Okay, here we go. Lewis would be proud of me here. There's one off. No, it's not quite off. It managed to stay on there. There's two off. Three off. Four off. The next one, five. These things are tiny. Six. Seven. We're halfway home. And eight. Nine. Ten. And 14. Okay. So all the resistors off. Oh, I didn't actually try Ali. That's a good idea. Let's give him a shot. Alright, so now we have basically uh, lobotomized 
this thing because now all of the fancy electronics in here can no longer control these little transistors and it's these little transistors that are what control the IGBT drivers so all right next plan is I want to install this here in such a way that I can run some wires uh, to what I assume are just the test pads here so I'm gonna have to have 14 wires on this let me see how many tracks I got on this piece of crap here uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, I'm good on this piece. Probably not so good on this piece, I think. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. What do you know? It's exactly 14. Alrighty. So, yeah, let's get that in there. I want to get some thin wire. And back you guys off a little bit so you can maybe see a bit more of what I'm doing here. There we go. I don't know if any of this is better. Anyone wants any particular kind of a shot or something on this, just let me know. Like this stuff is incredibly boring, I know. Um, but I just wanted. When I was doing this, I was kind of thinking, you know, what do I do? Do I make a video once I've discovered it, or do I bring people along for the ride? And I think I figured I've done lots of videos on this, but it might be interesting for people to see. Um, it might be interesting for people to see, you know, the kind of process that I go through with this. You might kind of learn something, I don't know. Anyway, I figured, you know, I might as well torture you guys some more. Get a set up here. Alright. Glad someone's finding it interesting anyway. So the point of this is we're going to attach some wires on here. Uh, we're going to need to attach. Then we're going to need to put some resistors on this board. So we're going to need to cut these tracks here so we can uh, put some 1K resistors on here. And then once we have this kind of mount it on it'll take the strain off these little small solder joints here um we're going to want to basically then have longer wires that we can take away to um you know something like uh like the like the analog dis discovery or a signal generator or something like that so that we can basically drive these things without this logic board getting in the way let me give you guys the part number uh, for that JST connector, anyone's got a anyone's got a sense of where I can get one of those? Uh, let me see if this is going to focus right. So these are the part numbers. This is the one at the top. Is really the one we're looking for. It's a BM fifty B SHLDS GTFT. Uh, the one on the bottom is a right angle connector which seemed to be somewhat more available um but i mean i mean i could work with it it's a bm50 b s r d s a g t f so if anyone has any info on where i could get um or i could get them uh definitely you know please do ping me a message on that uh, it would be interesting. So, alrighty. Um, yeah, there'll be more on this and leaf stuff coming along, Gary. Uh, like, there's uh, too many projects and also a lot of stuff going on in my in my personal life right now. That's kind of you know taking a lot of my time, but you know that's just that's just the way it is. Uh, so I kind of come out here to the workshop to unwind believe it or not uh, so yeah go figure so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just move this away because I don't really need it what I'm going to do is I'm going to start soldering these little uh, wire stubs into the back of the strip board here so that we can basically get ourselves uh, ready to make this little adapter board um, if people are interested in reverse engineering stuff, one of the better 
channels out there where I've seen some really good advice is uh, I think it's called Mike's Electric Stuff. Uh, I can definitely recommend that. Let me get the, the uh, Southern Iron Stone over here. Nothing like leaving it over a piece of paper. That's not going to go on fire, of course. I cut off a couple of these and also they were kind of working on the same hem sheet here. So while I'm working away, if anyone wants to shoot a question or something, by all means do. Anything you want to know, just don't ask me about Brexit. Yeah, basically, once we get this stuff figured out, we'll be well on the way to uh, controlling this inverter now. So one of the reasons I've been looking at this is that, you know, we got a lot of high-end stuff going on with Tesla and so forth, but anything what people need is something they can access. Uh, so that's what I'm trying to do with this, to kind of bring it back to give to give access to people um, to a reliable inverter that you can actually afford to find you know, that available in pretty much every jurisdiction you find yourself in. Uh, Johannes is working on the Gen 2, so don't worry, that hasn't been forgotten. I figured while he was, wor was working on the Gen 2, I might as well be working on the gym tree. Yeah, Mike's electric stuff. If you uh, uh, just type it into YouTube and it'll bring up a channel. Um, a lot of very in-depth content on there. And he's a little bit more interesting than me too. So, you know, that's always a bonus. Um, I understand a lot of this stuff is quite not exactly uh, prime time viewing but it's also I think sometimes good for people to see just the process I go through and that doing this stuff um, so what I try to do here is I, I kind of you know I don't have the bandwidth to to help everyone with their project what I'm trying to show people is how you can do it for yourself. Uh, I think that's important then because the more people that know how to do something, well then the more people that know how to do something and you can kind of, you know, you can uh, spread knowledge and skills. To me, that's what education is. It's not so much sitting in a classroom, it's, well, it's what am I going to do with what knowledge I have, you know, oh my god, who am I going to benefit with it? <sighs> ah, yay, glad you found it, Eric. Yeah, it's a good channel. only found it fairly recently my, myself. I get a lot of weird suggestions in my YouTube feed. Doesn't always, wouldn't exactly be stuff I'd, you know, be interested in. Uh, I don't know what algorithms they use, but uh, I think one time there's a rather funny one. My wife had used my laptop uh, when she was doing a meditation. I thought she just, you know, watched a meditation or listen to a meditation video. So the next day I log on and I always remember this. My three recommendations were the first one was how to make a suppressor for a 22 rifle out of a, out of a car oil filter. Uh, the next one was a nine minutes mindfulness meditation and the third one uh, was my favorite scene from terminator 2 so yeah quite a quite an eclectic uh, bunch of suggestions but i think i'd been looking for 
reverse engineering stuff recently. That's how I came across old Mike. What ails you guys on a Sunday or Sunday morning, probably not, or Saturday morning, I don't know, Monday morning. But this is it, it's, you know, it's a lot of boredom too, it's just a lot of doing the same stuff, but to me it's like solving a puzzle, and you're trying to get inside the head of the person that actually made the thing, you know, figure out why they did it and what course they took and that kind of helps you figure it out but also there's a bit of a buzz then from <coughs> actually getting it to work hmm. anyone uh anyone think that diy electric car forum is kind of dead it just doesn't seem to be much new stuff going on there it seems pretty i don't know maybe it's just me it just seems pretty dead to me Greg, uh, I've, yeah, I mean, it's, a lot of my stuff is kind of weird anyway, it's, it's not everyone's cup of tea, but I enjoy it. Anyone, anyone? Anyone else done much reverse engineering stuff or any other interesting projects you've got going on? You know, feel free to chime in while I'm doing this. This is pretty, pretty dull. Got to solder 14 wires in here, and we got to fix the board on. Then I got to fix them to this, but at least then I have a pad, a kind of a sketch pad that I can work on. Just for those of you just just joining us, that's what we're doing. Making an adapter board so we can hack into this piece of junk. Oh, okay, guys. Well, see you soon. DIY for built their cars and when driving, yeah, could be, could be, if, if that's the case, great, but it just seems kind of, I just, I don't, I don't know, maybe it's just me, it just seems kind of dead, so, maybe I'm remembering something that never was, I don't know. Nearly there, guys. Only another five to go. Once we get this guy sorted out, I don't think the Gen 4 inverter is going to be something I'm going to look at, at least not in the immediate term. It's not the, from what I could see, watching some of Weber Auto's uh, videos, it's not really friendly, whereas Gen 2 and the Gen 3 are. Also, it's more widely available. Oh yeah, by the way, I know some of you guys were asking me about the E65 7 Series project 
Uh, that is going to be happening. That is happening. Just had a lot going on, but it is going to be kicking up a gear if you'll pardon the pawn. Pretty soon the inverter is done for it. It's be behind the camera here. And the motor and the adapter with the drive shaft are done as well. So, yeah. <coughs> Trying to keep these lengths of wire kind of the same. So we have less stress on there. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah, and no, I like the video for I like the video for um sharing info too. The forums though the forum the forum kind of a of an I of a I don't know, platform. I think it's got a place. Like when you got a lot of when you want to share technical documents and you know, discuss some technical questions, particularly across multiple time zones and stuff like the, like that. I mean, when I was doing uh, quite a bit of this work yesterday, I had basically zero viewers. Um, you know, probably mostly just because of time zone difference. Um, but so either that or I am more boring than I can even conceive of. Which is entirely possible. Okay, I think this is the last one. Woohoo! Alright. Well, the real work starts. Yeah, it is. It's, uh, it's a bit of a process. Like, typically, depending on the in inverter, depending how, you know, difficult or weird that they've kind of made it, can take anything from two days to two weeks to figure out, uh, you know, how something works. Um, Tesla, believe it or not, was actually the easiest. Um, you know, they didn't have any weird enable lines and other junk going on in there. These guys aren't too bad either. I mean, the Gen 2 is pretty much an um, open book, but... Uh, this one's a little weird. Uh, the BMW i3, which I'm also looking at, is incredibly weird. Uh, they just do things that you just say, why? You know, what were you possibly thinking of? Um, which, you know, as my favourite, as they are my favourite auto maker, I kind of, uh, you know, don't like dissing them, but on this case, guys, yeah. I think you were, uh, I think you had you know, too much schnapps. So, what you want to do now is you want to position this uh, kind of so we can connect each of these little jumper wires down to a pad here. So, before we can do that, we're going to have to tin the pads. And before we can do that, uh, we're going to have to get some fluffs on here. So, we just use a uh, pen flux on here because the rework flux is really good but it's also really expensive so I try not to use it unless I'm out reworking something. Stand by for the weird headset and more Lewis Rossman specials here. Except I don't have his cool um don't have his really cool um microscope set up. Might have to uh, find myself doing that at some point. Take my production up a gear and it'll probably make you guys a lot happier. But it's like everything else, you kind of gotta find the time to do it. You gotta find the money to do it as well. I thank everyone that does support me because, like I say, it's not the most interesting content. Alright. Now that we're on there, the next part of the puzzle is I want to find some way to mount this that's not going to short it off. The, it's not going to have it shorting off here. Now the good news, or the good uh, point about using the board upside down is that it's, you know, it's got the fiberglass or whatever, or a chem tree probably. I'm going to get you guys in a bit better here. You know, it's got the substrate there so it won't 
pretty much short off anything. But that being said, I want to secure it down here with like a strip of tape or something like that. Just something that won't let it jump around. So let, let me go grab something uh, just to make that happen with. Another problem. I don't need to worry about that. That's okay. Uh, yeah, let's get some thin paper. We don't even have to go out of the road. No. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is just going to put a couple of strips of tape uh, so it's just across the board. I want to use a bit of the packing tape for us. Yeah, use a bit of the packing tape. I'm just going to throw it across here. Probably no real need, but better unsafe than sorry. That's what I always say. So, yeah, let me put a let me put a strip of that packing tape there. Like that. And uh, now I can basically set that down there. You know, without needing to worry too much. Gives us somewhere then we can solder onto. So, strip of sellotape. And there uh, should be all good. Yeah, for some reason the microphone in this camera is not really the best. I have ordered I have ordered a USB microphone, so that should be here you know, in about a week or so. So I'm hoping that will improve the situation on those little tight clip ones. I do have a tight clip one, but for some reason it doesn't want to work with the laptop here that I have for the live streaming so unfortunately guys i know the sound has been a bit crappy on these streams so apologies for that um it's just unfortunate seems to be always something weird with live streaming and videos i mean my gopro is not the happiest gopro either but yes, we gotta just go with it get it go with it uh -huh. okay Enough of my bad bad jokes. Uh, so now for the next most boring point, we've got to connect our little yellow tails um, onto these pads here. Then we've got a you know we got a pretty secure um, we've got a pretty secure space to work on where I can solder tails on here, or we can even probe directly onto this. We could probably do for tonight just to actually test it out. Just probe on there with a, with a 1k resistor uh, coming from the 5 volt line, and we should be able to drive the thing. So yeah, let's give let's give that a shot. So once more onto the breach. So here we go. All right. And just tin these leads. Then just kind of guide each one in. That's the reason I put the bend in them is that it lets me compensate for minor differences in the in the length. Let me just grab the little tweezers there for a sec. Okay, there's two connected. So this is basically what we're going to be doing here. We're going to be just walking across um, each of these little wires here, tinning them and connecting them down to a pad. Most times I don't have to do this. Like I don't have to you know, create one of these little adapter boards and that but on this occasion um, just due to the way the circuit's designed and the fine uh, nature of the you know the components here kind of got no choice so it is an extra step in the in the process a lot of the time you don't need to do that um, but again it's just due to the fine pitch connector and all this that we've got going on 
and also the fact that I'm having trouble locating the connector because what I would also tend to have done would be to just bypass this step entirely um, and just make a little breakout PCB so just a simple PCB uh, there'd be no components on it just uh, just a connector and a bunch of pads we kind of you know break out the 50 holes on there um, and then I could you know just kind of lay it out on the bench with discrete components work out what I needed to work out then we'd be all set but due to the fact I can't really just grab that connector readily uh, we're going down this avenue That's actually going. That's actually going pretty much okay right now. It's going pretty much okay. I mean, one thing I do recommend you don't do. Um, film on Netflix today, The Ballad of Buster Scruggs. And it is truly as bad as it sounds, so take my advice, don't watch it. You won't get those 90 minutes back, guys. Plus, I can do a lot in 90 minutes. Bore enough people to death on YouTube to uh, fill up a 747, probably. Alright, just going pretty good. Come on, guys, talk to me. I'm getting a bit freaked out sitting there talking to myself. When I had no viewers, at least I could you know, talk to myself without being too self-conscious about it. Now I'm feeling a little bit self-conscious about it. But hey, Now that I have viewers again, the old ego is getting stoked again, so that's always good. I would say the ego was kind of flatlining there yesterday, so. Now that I know I'm loved again, you know, it kind of helps steady the hands for delicate soldering, things like that. This wire is a little heavy for what I'd like for this, but you could, you could use resistor legs as well. It's another way to do it. Kind of prefer to use insulated wire. It tends to have less accidents when you're going straight into signal paths like this. You know, all it takes is one stray line, even to five volts, to uh, or even the 5 or 12 volts or something like that to cause you a major problem. So, yeah, the old insulated wire tends to be a good idea. Second last one, guys. And here comes the last one. Alright. That's it. They're all on. So, at least theoretically now, you know, we've got this area that we can actually work on. Uh, um, what brand are these? I got them on... Uh, Got these on eBay, they're just kind of a generic, I think they're just a generic kind of a Chinese thing. Um, there's no make or model on them. 
what I what I did like about him is he can kind of flip up the you, know, you can kind of flip this up and it's quite adjustable and it's given me that little bit of a mag just for what I'm doing there so I don't really know what they are but yeah they were they seem to work here about like a 10 bucks or something like that um so that's it guys we're on there now we got all the connections we could so all right let's see if we can do something that's even semi-interesting to the world now um yeah enamel wire would be a good choice especially if you can get it with the solder true um if you can get it with the solder true um insulation would be a good choice it's not terribly critical here this this isn't you know stupidly small it's small but not stupidly small um but if i was doing on to like the if I, if I if i was trying to go on to the leads of a of a qfp or something like that i'd definitely be going for some solder true enamel wire um, it's not a lacquered pcb there is a tiny bit of conformal coating on there um but it's not uh but it's not um you know it's not as it's not you know it's just a bare coating you can just solder straight through it the tesla stuff is horrendous that way um elon has been secreting goo on all the boards only when he uh i don't know he stays there late at night now so we have yeah we have a go on this then so what we want to do now is plug this back into the yeah, let me get a 1k resistor a couple of things i'm going to pull the inverter back over here and then we'll uh yeah, we should be all set um we should be all set i got some hot loads of 1k2 so i'm glad i'm all right time for some movement guys so hang on to your back sides here we go uh, Bring you guys up if I need to. As soon as I get uh, as as I get set in here now. Uh, oh, great! What's just going on here? So let's make some room. I need my pen and my notebook. Yeah, let's grab the inverter head here. So here we go. Here is my trusty inverter. Uh, if you guys see this, you're a bit. Push away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get you up a little bit higher, so you can see a bit more about what's going on. As my wonderful tripod wants to cooperate. All right, here we go. Wow. Yep. Did you know this was filmed in front of a live studio audience? Okay, let's get as much of this in here as we can. All right, there we go. So, yeah, that's a good idea, Kevin. I was thinking about that. Um, I was thinking about doing that. It would be possible because this is the. It's a wired connector, so it's a it's a it's, it's what they call a wire to board connector so we could in a pinch cut this guy off here and you know use this as a tail i could even put solder pads on the board so you just basically chop that plug off solder it to the board and you've still got you know you can still disconnect on this end or we could find another connector that go on this the only problem is uh you know then you start getting into pins and crimping tools and all that nonsense so i just want to yeah i want to try to avoid that hopefully anyhow anyhow that's for that's for another day um so let's see what we get let's see what we get all right so i've got my little board there so what i'm going to do is i'm going to plug the uh plug logic board back in now for those of you that weren't joining me on yesterday's marathon uh what we had worked out was that this there's a five volt connector or a that there's a transistor switch 
that connects to pin 50 on the connector. And this is the enable line for our IGBT driver. So what I did was I hit that little piece of wire just shorting out the transistor just so it's permanently on. Now I'm not going to bother with the current sensors. I don't need them. Uh, we don't need current or temperature sensors here. So what I'm going to do at the minute now is I think I'm going to just fold the board over like this in some way, shape or form that doesn't uh, have it short circuiting everywhere. Because it would just love to do that, I'm sure. Uh, let's see, that doesn't look too good there. So let me find something I can stick in here that will insulate it, like a box of screwdrivers, for example. There we go. Alright. Okay, there we go. Success. So let me, uh, let me kick my multimeter back on here. Alright, multimeter is on. Um, what am I doing? What am I doing? So this is plugged in, so I should be able to hit the power supply. Oh yeah, okay, power supply is on. That was easy enough. Um, let's hope something didn't just explode. Uh, right, so if I were to have a look at one of these IGBTs, uh, these are labeled, but there's a G and an E, so I'm going to have a look on here. And I've got zero volts on here now. Yeah, it's zero volts on this IGBT. Oh, one of the other things is that rather weirdly, uh, these are not negative gate drive. They don't use negative gate drive. They just go, um, they just go plus 15 volts to ground. So... All right, so the power's on. Um, going to assume, and I know, you know where that's going to get me, but I'm going to assume that uh, it's, you know, from one to twelve. So you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, and then down here is the booster, because this is a picture here. This is. The one nearest to power in is MG1. So this is MG1, this is MG2. There's six transistors here. Or sorry, yeah, six here, six here, and then two here. It gives us a total of 14. Um, so, all right. Let's, uh, let's see what we want to do. So I want to put five volts onto some of these via a resistor. I did have a 1K2 hanging around here somewhere. Of course, that's now vanished. So, ooh, ooh. Oh, almost a hard way. Now, anyway, that's a ground I have for my oscilloscope, so I don't need that at the minute. Duty is to rob that 5 volt signal, put it through a 1K2 resistor, or a 1K resistor, any kind of a low value ish resistor, which, yeah, so my resistor has vanished. I'm going to get a Mystery of the disappearing resistor. I don't, I don't suppose anyone spots it where it is there. Surprise if you do. Okay, here we go. So now, what I want to do is get another clip lead. Clip lead, clip lead, clip lead. I got about 50,000 of these things. Here we go. Clip lead. It's not a burnt one. That one's burnt up. It's no use to me. Here we go. Oh wow. Come on guys, just one clip lead, please. Just one ping. Name the movie. Now, just one ping. Now, there we go. Can't do it in my best Sean Connery accent for you, even though that's probably giving it away. Now, so here we go, right? Going to... This should have five volts on it. And... Oh yeah, that's definitely doing something. Oh yeah. When I ripple across there now, I can see the current demand or the board changing. So we are turning on transistors. Yeah, this is definitely happening. So I can just stick, woo, just stick my resistor in there, like so. 
There we go. So I have turned on a transistor somewhere. So what we got to do now is find it. So in order to find it, we're going to use the multimeter. I don't know if you guys can see any of this. I'm going to try and give you a bit more of a view here. I don't know if you're seeing any of this. The hunt for red October. Well done. Just one ping, please. Now, I'm going to see which transistor I managed to turn on. So it's not this one. Not this one. Of course, now it's really difficult because now I can bend over myself and stick my head in the way that you guys love to look at. Meter two. Gate one. Gate two. Sorry, meter two, gate two. It's not this one. Meter one. Gate one. Not that one. So, so much for my fantastic theory that this one here would be the number one transistor. So, I wonder is it something to do with MG... MG1? Could this be MG1 instead? Let me have a quick look and make sure that is actually turned on here for a second. Because I'm not exactly feeling the love here. Oh, yeah, it is. It's on. That's first part of that. be 5 volts on that. I should have ground on there. Oh, 1.7 volts, which is good enough. Ground on that. Oh, yeah, that explains why it was. Yeah, this one's definitely turned on. Or am I, th am I thinking about this right? Yeah, I think I'm thinking about it right. Because when they're pulled down, they're turned on. Yeah, when they're pulled, the, yeah, when they're pulled low, they're turned off. So that has to no. Never say has to be with this stuff, because you'll end up a fool out of yourself, just like me. I'll just check that the power supply is turned on here because I'm just having a nasty little suspicion. Oh yeah, I know. I'm just trying to go on one of the 15 volt caps here and check that the power supply is actually punched up. Yeah, in fact, well, it's 13 volts on that one, so that's not very good. Alright, 15 volt caps. In fact, I'm not helping myself having the board like that because it's kind of blocking off this side of the inverter on me um, no i'm not helping myself e1 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 g1 e1 g1 e1 g1 no g1 g1 other option right other way to do this is we go backwards rather than picking one of these and seeing which transistor that it actually turns on what we can do is we can pick a transistor here and then ripple the resistor uh, to see which line turns that transistor on that sounds like a better plan doesn't it Maybe a little bit less chasing my tail then so i'm going to clip on to just out of convenience uh this so MG1, you know, whatever it is, phase one, I think. Or MG2 phase one, phase one, sorry. I'm going to clip on to the emitter one here. So hopefully I don't know much. This is going to be such a pain. Just going to try to clip on to it without shorting out or falling away. See? What happens with cheap leads is they tend to... Uh, well, they're not very flexible. What you need when you're doing this stuff is a really flexible lens. Let's try and measure one there. All right, I think I got it. Yeah, I'm on. So I measure one, and I only want gate one here now. So I'm going to do is I'm going to ripple. Oh yeah, I found him. He's here. There he is. It's one of these here. 
this one. Come here, come here. There he is. I found him. It's this one. It's this one here. He's on. It's 15 volts on the gate to emitter now. I had a look on Farnell yesterday for that JST connector. I couldn't, uh, they didn't list it. Uh, do you want to go ahead and throw me a link then? Maybe I just missed it. That'd be really cool. Okay, so, interestingly, this is, um, hang on, what am I missing here? Yeah, what am I missing? Because I don't know. Okay. I think I've been a bit of an idiot here, guys, because what we don't know is what constitutes a high side and what constitutes a low side. So what I've got to do is determine which of these thermals here on the side. Let me bring it down here a bit. There we go. These thermals here on the side. Um are which one's positive and which one's negative and then i'll use the meter on the igbt block which would be a better way to know then whether we have a high side or a low side turned on um so yeah that would make better sense i think now, this one's definitely turned on so we know that to turn a transistor on we've got to pull a low <coughs> we have to pull the respective pin low So at least we can do that now. So that's pretty cool. But we've got to get a quick look at the ORNL uh, teardown document just to see which of these is positive and negative. So give me two seconds. Just want to do that really quickly here. You have it downloaded. Prius, 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 Here we go. I've got the capacitor there anyway, they've got that marked. Um, so that will tend to indicate what the pain nearest me is positive. I'm not really sure about that. Actually, there's no way to know what I know. I should show you guys how to do that. Yeah, you're okay. I'll show you guys how to do that. Um, so, so if you've, you've got, got an IGBT block like this, this okay, uh, we don't know uh, which of the DC terminals is the positive and which is negative, but we can access them, okay? So let me turn off that transistor that we've turned on. What you want to do, um, disconnect this guy here get your multimeter and put it on uh, you want to put it on the diode test function right? because let me get you back up here now so what you want is you want your meter on diode test now we have okay sorry we have three phase terminals here and we have DC terminals here now in a switch what we can know is that when we've all are oh, sorry in one of these igbt packs all right so i'm going to connect let me just mess about with my my uh probes a little bit here because what i want to do is i want the positive probe from the meter I'm going to take this and i'm going to connect it to any of the phase terminals okay now got my uh, 
negative side probe. So what the diode test function is going to do is it's going to inject a voltage into one of the phase leads and I'm going to try to find it with the, with uh, this guy. Now I'm going to touch it off one of these two of these unless these are not related to of course the uh, I'm going to make a fool of myself on national television am I? It looks like I am because maybe these bricks don't have anti-parallel diodes, which we can still beat it. Uh, we can still we can still beat it, um, even if they don't. But what you should see is that one of these should give us a positive from the diode test function. Now, unless no, it's not, which is not reassuring. Okay, I think I just found that for some reason. Okay, over here on my... Oh, of course, because this is the booster converter. What am I doing? I'm an idiot. Sorry. Sorry, these aren't the DC leads. The DC leads are on this side. That wouldn't have been very smart of me, would it? So, yeah, okay. So, okay, the idea works. So, alright. I don't know if you guys will be able to see this. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to we've got the positive side as I said on one of the phase terminals now if you kind of picture the three phase bridge and we're putting power in on one of the phase terminals we've got all the switches turned off so that power can't go down to the DC bus negative because the switch is turned off and the flyback or freewheel diode is reverse bias but it can go up to the dc bus positive because it can travel through the um anti-parallel diode or freewheel diode or whatever you want to call it and so what i can tell you is that just in here i can identify the dc bus positive by virtue of the fact that I'm seeing about 370 millivolts here, which is, you know, typical drop across a shock key diode. And I, and I see nothing when I touch on the negative. So that guy down there is a positive, and that one's a negative. So, get myself a bit of a marker going on here. I'm going to just mark that guy as the negative. He's got a black marker, so I'm just going to mark the thing as being negative. Now you might be saying, well, why did we want to know that <coughs> in the first place? Well, the reason that we want to know that is we want to see which switch turns on. So we're, we're, we're going to use the kind of opposite logic. So I'm going to take my meter now. I'm going to connect the meter uh, to the DC, the, the DC bus positive. Like the positive terminal of my multimeter to the DC bus uh, positive wire here. There it is. Okay. Now I'm going to take my probe, disconnect that, and I'm going to stuff it into um, one of the phase terminals. Now, when I turn on the phase terminal that this probe is now connected to, it will be the high side for that. Okay. So we're going to take our little, uh, take our little resistor and scroll across here. Here it comes. There it is. We've got our drop across the IGBT here. So that's a high sign. We've now found the phase one high sign. And so what we have to do we have to go through each and every one of these and uh, identify um, you know which one of these represents which transistor so this is I guess you want to look at it because I'm looking at the, you know I'm looking at the front of the inverter here so if I want to look at this this would be mg1 or sorry mg2 um, 
you know, if I wanted to go from right to left, this would be phase one. Um, but it'd be interesting to see which one connects to this, which you prefer to be as your phase one. So let's have a look and say my side here. Okay, here we are. Okay, so that's kind of more like it. See, everything has a certain order, so it's now the second one I'm switching on is MG2 high side. So what we might see is that it goes low, high, low, high, low, high across this way. Okay. So let's go see if that holds true. Now, in order to do that, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to flip my leads because I want to find low sides. And to find low sides, um, I want to be going into the phase terminal and coming out on the DC bus negative. So, let's see here. Yeah, I want to be going into the phase terminal. I'll disconnect this for a sec. I've got to go back in here now. Sorry, I know you can't see this, but what I'm doing is I'm moving the meter probe onto DC bus uh, negative thermal. Now I'm going to take the meter probe, put it in onto MG2 uh, phase one. I take my little flying probe again. Yeah. And that holds true. That is what I mean when I say you look to find patterns. So now we can say that it's MG2. Let me get my pen and pencil here so I'm not doing this time and time again. So we look at our look at how this works. What we've got going on is, um, let me see here now, that's the top of the board, so that's the bottom of the board here. So down here, we're basically, you yeah, know, as far away from as we can get, so we're down, down on this end of the connector. Uh, we're on this, well, of course, if we look at our connector diagram that we worked out yesterday, yeah, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, five, six. Um, what we can tell is it goes low high. So each of these, each of these little transistors here on the logic board controls one phase. So it, it's MG1 or ah, MG2 inverter, phase A, B, and C. MG1 inverter, phase A, B, and C. And then this guy down the end controls the booster. So that is what we've got going on here. It's pretty straightforward, straightforward actually. Um, so yeah, it's pretty straightforward. This this is gonna work out. Uh, so this is MG two low side. So low high, yeah, low high, low high, low high. Let me check that theory now. So if that theory holds true, okay, I should if I move on to the second phase here of MG two. So it should be. You know, low high, and then the third one should be. Oh. Now I guess that theory doesn't hold them. So much for that. That's a bit weird, isn't it? It's more than a little weird. So, yeah, that's low side. Oh, thank you, multimeter. Anyone got any theories on this? So, if I go to phase A, I've got that turned on there now. 
phase A low side, which you would then say would be phase A high side, then you would have thought it would be phase B low side would be this one, that's not it's this one. This one here. Mm. Then you'd say, okay, so phase C, B, side, now it's this one. Yikes. Okay, well, so much for that theory, guys. It's not going to hold, uh, it's not going to hold water for me. So we're going to have to find them the hard way. So, okay, let's go find low sides. So what I'm going to do now is, because this is a little bit of a mess we have going on here, I'm going to draw myself a little diagram of what I have here. So just basically uh, the board and just something to identify it. And I'm going to say, right, so I have my 14 uh, rows here. So I'm going to just, um, just going to start down the bottom here and just kind of name them. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. Okay. So looking at it from this perspective, well, this is MG2, you know, phase A, B, and C. Um, so if we want to look at yeah, if we want to look at MG2 phase A, look, it's either all low sides, and now we're going to do so low sides, so that's 14 then. 14 is MG2 A low. So this is B. 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 10. 10. 10 is MG2 below 10. 11, 12, 13, 14. Ah, 14. 14. Sorry. I'm going to mop it here, aren't I? Sorry, guys. That's. So it's 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 6, 6, yeah, 6 it is, 6 is MG2, A, low. So, let's go find the highs, so we're going to have to change around my leads, we find MG2, and then... Someone sending me a pin out on here so that I don't need to do this. <laughs> that would be interesting. I don't really understand, but it's not coming out right. Um, okay, so if you do have a pin out, can you email it to info, I N F O at edbmw.com please because uh it looks like you've done the hard work so i don't have to oh okay anyway we'll uh thank you for that by the way we'll keep on going here uh just the same i'm gonna have to knock it off soon because uh, i gotta get up at 6 a.m tomorrow morning um now yeah so we gotta do multimeter lead swap And I gotta go in here and connect to you the positives. Right, so I'm positive now again. So now when I inject into the phase, and we should be able to find the high side. So this is A again. Okay, so this is I. Okay, so this is now MG2 MG2 A I. Okay, which is Okay, and I'm betting. Let's do this. So there's uh, that one. So that's 14, uh, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 9, 8, 9. Ah! 
starting to get tired now. 14, 13, 11. Oh, Jesus. 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9. I keep counting ahead of myself. 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9. So 9. Nine. Come here, you little back. Nine. Yeah, that makes sense. It's beside it. Mg two B pi. I'm betting five. It's gonna be Mg two uh, nine. Eight seven six five. Yeah, pattern. Okay, yay. There, there is a pattern here. So Mg two A. Right. Okay, so, so that's, that's the procedure, guys. That is what we do. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just build up the pattern here. Um, then I can go back and identify on the actual connector, you know, which pin that I'm playing with here. Um, you know, basically corresponds to what pin on that JST connector or my new best friend here is going to provide that information for me um, and then that's that's how we do it really um, and once we know that now uh, you know we know the rest of the stuff like the current sensors and the, excuse me the current sensor and the temperature sensors you know then we can um, then we can design a board and then that's it, you know. Design a board and you guys can go off and buy them from me or make them yourselves or do whatever you want to do with it. But after that, it'll be your job. Your job to find cars to put this, this stuff in because remember folks, wars of the future will not be fought on the battlefield. Instead, they will be fought in space by giant robots and it is up to us to build and maintain these robots so get working all right i'm going to wrap it up uh ah, where are you guys going on me come here where are you going my, my, look, there's my head there's my head all right so hope you guys have enjoyed this uh we will be back again um I'll be obviously publishing uh, the stuff that we find out. I'm not going to drag you through me kind of going back through the connector here, it, you know, finding uh, finding which pin does what. But I will publish the pin out then once we have it figured out. So, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, I'm going to go and get a cup of tea and get myself to bed because I'm pretty tired. Um, so thanks a lot for joining in. Thanks for all the support. Um, and hopefully we're going to have a logic board for this inverter for you guys really soon. Um, so, all right. Thank you. And i um, going to sign off. It's actually a Simpsons reference. Um, so I'm going to catch you guys on the next stream or video or wherever I catch you. Uh, don't forget to like, share, subscribe and uh, if you want to. Uh, maybe give me a uh, support on Patreon or PayPal or hell, even send me a postcard. All right, guys. Don't do anything stupid and happy inverter reverse engineering. See you next time. Ugh, how do I turn this crap off? Oh.